more than 100 people, 120 people have died and hundreds more are still missing after the worst flooding in parts of Western Europe for several decades. In Germany, emergency crews are searching for dozens who are unaccounted for, with the Chancellor Angela Merkel describing the floods as a catastrophe. Torrential rain has also devastated parts of Belgium, the Netherlands and Luxembourg. Swollen rivers, including the Rhine, the Meuse and the Aar, have swept through towns and villages, destroying homes, leaving many stranded. In Erfstadt, in Germany, whole houses have been submerged and a landslide has demolished parts of the town. Well, our correspondent Jenny Hill has spent the day in Erfstadt and is now in the Aar Valley Forest tonight. Hi there. Clive, tonight the waters are starting to slowly recede across the region, but the number of dead is expected to continue to rise. Today, the German president, Frank-Walter Steinmeier, described what's happened, what's happening as a tragedy which has left him stunned. It's a sentiment, of course, which is shared by so many people in this area, not least in the town you mentioned, the town of Erftstadt, um, where emergency workers have been carrying out a search and rescue operation since last night. The ground just fell away. This is the town of Erfstadt, where overnight houses collapsed as the water gushed in. Another shock for a country reeling from the enormity of its loss. It happened so fast, one official said, there was no time for a warning. Rescuers rushed in. But this morning, the authorities here said people trapped in their homes were calling them for help, and in many cases, they just couldn't reach them. Those who did make it out came to shelters like this. We met Johannes here. He and his wife were winched to safety last night. He arrived barefoot and soaking wet. What were you thinking as they winched you up, I ask? I had to leave my cat behind, he says. Johannes has lived here more than 70 years. There have been floods, he told us, but not like this. You can run from fire, but not from water. Tens of thousands of people still don't have power, and they're on alert. Water levels have dropped in some areas, but few here feel safe. You can see how powerful the water is here still. And what's worrying people in this area is that just upstream, there's a dam. Experts say it's unstable. They're still inspecting it, but people here think if that dam breaks, the water is heading in this direction. And with every hour, news of more deaths. People are still missing. With mobile networks down, it's hard to know how many made it to safety. They're desperate for help here. This was a caravan park. How to even begin clearing up? We met the owners, still visibly in shock. Indescribable. We've been here since 1979. We've never seen anything like this. If we don't get any help, we'll have to go on benefits. Bankrupt. Germany, a country famed for its strength, its security, feels vulnerable now. Jenny Hill, BBC News, Erftstadt. Well, many survivors have spoken of the speed at which water levels rose as the rain came down. And tonight, some towns and villages remain under threat, with thousands of people in the Netherlands and Belgium urged to leave their homes. Our correspondent, Anna Holligan, has more details. Homes engulfed, whole villages submerged, parts of Liège annihilated by the elements. Rescuers are still navigating areas to the west in the town of Papinster. The military was drafted in to assist the stranded on land and by air. And for some, it's a desperate wait to find out whether their loved ones made it. My wife is looking for her mother who lives in a town nearby. But we have no means of communication. We don't know where she is or how she's doing. In nearby Varvier, the waters have receded, but they're still stunned by the extent of the destruction. This shop has been open for three years. We had to go through renovations. We had to live through COVID. We were hoping to get back on our feet. And now this. In the Netherlands, this was Roermond. Swathes of the city have disappeared. This region has been declared a disaster zone. These are the remnants of businesses in the spa town of Valkenburg. 
Well, the emergency services are busy trying to restore power and secure pavements. The people have come together to try to bring some form of order to these devastated streets. While COVID kept them isolated and apart, this crisis has caused a community to come out in solidarity. We need to stay positive. We can cry all day, but this will not, it will not help anything. So uh, better smiling and uh, keep working. The rain has paused, but the threat here and in towns and cities across Europe isn't over yet. Anna Holligan, BBC News, Valkenburg. Well, some politicians in Germany say the extreme weather is the result of global warming and they're calling for work on climate protection measures to be accelerated. Our chief environment correspondent, Justin Rolat, assesses the role of climate change in the record amounts of rainfall that are now affecting parts of Europe. The floods in Germany aren't the only extreme weather event we've seen this summer. There was the dramatic heat wave in Canada and the Western United States last month, and Russia, Mexico and New Zealand have all been experiencing unusually high temperatures. Now, the climate science is very clear on this. It has been predicting not just for years, but for decades, that if we continue to pump huge amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, we will experience increasingly high temperatures. And because warm air holds more moisture, that means heavier rainfall too, and therefore floods. Well, you only have to look at the pictures of these devastating floods to know that we need to do better. It is not OK for this number of people to die in 2021 from floods. So the next obvious question is, is the world doing enough to tackle climate change? Again, the answer is very clear. It is not. The UN says we need to reduce carbon emissions by 7% every year for the next decade if we're going to stand a reasonable chance of staying within what is reckoned to be the safe limit, 1.5 degrees centigrade. Now, we did achieve that last year, but in the teeth of the pandemic. So the only good outcome from these recent extreme weather events is if it encourages the world to raise its carbon-cutting game when it meets at the landmark climate conference in Glasgow in November. Justin Rolat, BBC News.